All right. Good morning. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you may be. Right on. Justin, what's up, man? How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about yourself, Travis? Oh, no complaints, man. No complaints at all. You know, just uh, just chilling, man. It's uh, you know Wednesday after after a long weekend, man. So a good yeah, weekend, no, right? No complaints there. Yeah, 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 man. It, yeah. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, man. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully you you as well had uh, had a good time, and and hopefully those uh, those that are here listening also had a good time, right? Um, <clears throat> I would say like one of the most important holidays <clears throat> in our country, right? So. I hope everybody had a great July Fourth. Yeah, definitely. Oh heck yeah, brother! Heck yeah. Um, but yeah, so veterans, as you're coming in today, um, you know, first off, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Um, you know, we're excited to uh, to share some good information with you guys today, um, guys and gals. Um, if you want to, in the chat, go ahead and throw in your branch of service that you served in, the years that you were in. Um, and uh, you know, let's kind of uh, let's kind of start off with uh, with some of that recognition for for you guys as well. So. Right on, yeah. But uh, outside of that, you know, um, as you were saying, yeah, Justin, it uh, you know, huge uh, huge holiday, man. So oh, definitely, definitely. And um, just for all of you tuning in, of course, you can see the title here, but, you know, we're the topic of conversation is going to be uh, how VA presumptives work, right? How do presumptive claims work? And uh, we'll definitely be getting into that in a little bit, right? Heck yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like we started off with two, uh, two Marine Corps vets, uh, Pedro and Randy over there. All right, awesome. awesome. Welcome, welcome. Um, and, then, uh, and then actually two Army vets right after that, so... You know, got some representation from some army that got some uh marine oh, we corps got some, we got navy in the house as well heck yeah heck yeah well it looks like carol mike going navy it's interesting because they went they went two for the marine corps yeah two for the army and then two for the navy which uh yeah it was just uh it was kind of funny how that worked out but uh we got like a yeah, buddy mike. going huh <laughs> yeah 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 all right and dusty army from 99 to 01 awesome welcome brother on right on Tom Lombard, you got. Uh, looks like you wrote in there eighty percent on some presumptive conditions already. So yeah, awesome. You kind of already know what we're gonna be talking about today, which is which is great. Um, cool. Well, definitely. Yeah, looks be like, uh, oh, we got some army. Got some air force in here. Very cool. Uh, Margie, awesome, awesome. Manny. Good deal. Good deal. It looks like uh yeah, a bunch of bunch bunch of army today. Holy cow. Um got some more Air Force popping up here too. So now yeah, welcome everyone. Thank you for your service. Um mm -hmm. Carol says go Navy. Um right on. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Um well, there we go, there we go. We got some more Air Force coming in now. Holy cow. Got uh, got two of them there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your service once again. Um yeah, it, it's amazing what uh, what 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 you have done for our country and, and what uh, what our veterans currently do, our active service members currently do. So, um, you know, really, really want to say thank you for that. Yeah, please. And, um, you know, thank you so much for your service. Everyone who's joining in today this is awesome. Yeah. Looks like we got. Uh, oh, Alex, Alex, Alex right there went uh, went Air Force active to uh, to Navy Reserve to finish off his career as well. That's awesome as well. Oh, nice. Um, and actually looks like Christine and Bobby, uh, eight years. Uh, so it looks National. like Marine Corps, National Guard, and then 12 years, retired in 2012. Congratulations on your retirement. Very cool. That is a full career. Yeah, yeah no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it's awesome when you uh, – <clears throat> When you get that time in, you know, <clears throat> it's always, yeah. it's always tough, but, uh, you know, and, and I'll, and I'll say from my point of view, right. So, mm -hmm. you know, your, your first, I would say your first 10 years, you're like, man, like, I can't wait. You know, you, I mean, your first like six to eight years, you're like, I can't wait to get out. Right. Um, and then after you get past that point, you know, you're kind of like, oh man, you know, like, I, you know, well, I mean, now that I think about it, I should have stayed collected at retirement, <laughs> but, uh. But yeah, it, uh, it's it's weird on how it switches over like that. So you um, kind of get that that itch to get back in, right? Or 
Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and that, that itch is always there. Uh, I'll tell you that much. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's crazy. But yeah, what we'll do is, uh, you know, kind of introduced a lot of you guys on the uh, on the live today. Um, all of y'all listening. So um, you know, we'll kind of go into us a little bit. So Justin, I'll go ahead and start off, and then uh, sure. and then and then I'll pass it off pass it off to you, man. So um, you know, my name's Travis Autumn. I'm a senior veteran coach here at VA Claims Insider. Um, served in the United States Army for eight years, um, was a military police officer, so hopefully nobody holds it against me here today in our, in our live. Um, <clears throat> but I originally came to VACI as a, as a veteran myself, right? I was struggling with the VA system. I was having a hard time getting disability service connected. Didn't really know where or what to do, right? And, and I came here and, and shout out to my coach. Uh, you know, I had uh, actually a president of our organization, Terrell Morrell, um, as, as my as my coach. And, uh, you know, got my increases going. And, uh, and I just loved what we did here as an organization. And I loved what we stood for. So yeah. so when the opportunity arose for me to come on and join the team, man, I, I was like, heck yeah, let's do it, right? And uh, I came over here and... Uh, you know, I love I love working with our veterans every day. I love working with our other team members every day too. Um, you know, we're we're a very close knit family, and uh, and like I said, I enjoy I enjoy every part of it. So, enough about me, Justin. Let's hear from you, bro. Oh, definitely. So, um, I didn't serve myself. Uh, the reason I work at VACI is really simple reason. I just want to help people, right? And I know that working here um, and through the lives uh, that we've changed, you know, uh, it's fantastic. You get to hear from all people from all walks of life. You can see just in the chat how many different individuals are here uh, to learn, to get educated, to improve their lives, you know, to get some of these truths recognized. And that's what we're here to do at VACI is to um, hear you out, be there with you through this process, right? Um, so, you know, that's why I'm at VACI because I know that the work we do here actually makes a difference and I'm excited for it every day. So, uh, for yeah. all of you here on this, uh, this class, this, um, Facebook live, this is awesome. I'm so excited to, to hear from everyone and, um, put out some good information about presumptives too. Right. Yeah. Thank you, brother. And, and, you know, one of the big things is we're not accredited VSOs agents uh you know anything recognized by the va as you guys saw in the disclaimer area earlier you know we're literally veterans non-veterans helping other veterans right so so that's what that's what our main concentration is 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 hey getting you getting you the resources getting you the education that you need to be successful in your claim um and a lot of that boils down to kind of our SEM method, right? So our strategy, yeah. education, medical evidence, right? And that's what that's what we tend to focus in on, mm -hmm. um, and 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 kind of utilize that to assist um, any of y'all as well. So you know that includes one-on-one -on -one coachings, right? So you know you're able to you're able to sign up, um, you know, with us here, and uh, you know you get you get a coach that's assigned to you. Yeah. Um, that is your direct point of information. And, and you're able to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. You're able to have group conversations even because we have three classes per day, um, you know, Monday through Thursday in our program. So, and, you know, we build, we build not, only, not only a relationship with the individual veteran, but also as a community as well, which, which is probably one of my favorite things about, uh, about our organization here. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, I'm sure most of you here uh, on this live right now found us through Facebook, right? So that's one of the biggest uh, veteran communities that we try to create. You know, um, one of our mottos is veterans helping veterans, right? And this is definitely what we're here to do. So, and really just uh, like you were saying earlier, Travis, right? We're just people helping people, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, and right there's a great link too, you know, um, you know, you can get a free discovery call, you know, yeah. you will, you will get someone live on the phone to talk to you. Um, and, and you're able to ask them kind of some of the questions as well. Right. And then they're able to get you kind of through that door to the program to be able to talk to the coaches and, uh, and our experts as well. So, you know, that, uh, it's phenomenal that, that, you know, we have that opportunity to, to help as many veterans as what we do. Right on right on 
Yeah, without without further ado, Justin, let's go ahead and uh, let's jump into some of these questions that I'm seeing over here in the chat about uh, about the presumptive stuff. So, you know, one of the biggest things is, you know, I always like to answer the question, you know, what is a presumptive service connection, right? Right. So, you know, being able to know what it is, you know, before you before you go after anything is always is always beneficial. So, you know, presumptive condition, I guess, in the simplest terms, is basically a disability that the VA understands that you probably will have, right? For depending or depending on the location, um, or or your exposures that you had in the military service, right? So, mm-hmm. and basically, already presumes that you will at some point have this condition. Um, there's multiple different places that you can qualify for these presumptives too. Right. Um, one of the biggest things that I will say, and I'll kind of lead with this, is there is an amazing blog post that we do have on our website. Make sure you check that out. A lot of this information that we're actually going off from today is from that site, along with our own experiences. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one of the one of the big things there, you know, is, is there's different categories for, I guess, who qualifies for a presumptive condition, right? So former POWs are in that list. Um, atomic veterans exposed to ionizing radiation so you know you could have participated in some sort of atmospheric nuclear testing right depending on where you were um or or you know a lot of a lot of the long time long timers right so like if you were you know occupied or prisoners of war in hiroshima or nagasaki right those things as well um kind of play into that but one of the most interesting things that i found justin was yeah was that actually if you were at a diffusion plant yeah, in, in in Kentucky, Portsmouth, right, Ohio, Tennessee, um, you know, before 1992, a lot of a lot of those also qualify for that ionizing radiation um, kind of presumptive list. That's right. Um, you know, or even or even before 1974 um, up in Alaska, which is which is kind of interesting to me because a lot of times when you're thinking about that ionizing radiation, you're thinking overseas, right? You're thinking, yes. you know, early wars, and you're not really thinking about, you know, hey, what what is it? back home that could be leading to that as well and uh, um and travis i i think you bring up such a great point too which is um the time constraints right a lot of these don't really have harsh time constraints some of them do and we'll, we'll get into some of what those will be but uh, for a lot of you vets out there who um don't have any service connected conditions yet presumptive conditions definitely something you should consider you know um really look into that blog post when you have the chance later we'll definitely cover some of that here but don't ever count yourself out right it's never too late i mean um right one of the big ones agent orange that goes all the way back to vietnam right so yeah oh yeah yeah one of the one of the big things there too that you were just talking about is kind of uh kind of you know you know just making sure that you're concentrating on you know what's going on right now and kind of you know what's going on within your health right now as well now there is something that we will be touching on a little bit later and i'm really excited to talk about it and that's the pact act um, yeah. the 2022 pact act so um ladies and gentlemen huge huge stuff coming from the va we just have a little bit of knowledge of what it is right now um so make sure you're staying you're staying tuned in for that here in a little bit um and uh and yeah we'll kind of jump into that because it affects you know Vietnam veterans, Agent Orange exposure, Gulf War veterans, right? Um, yeah. And and those right there, you know, you, you touched on the and the Agent Orange stuff. You know, there's presumptives that that are covering underneath that. There's also presumptives for our Gulf War veterans, right? Right. Um, and and they kind of you know they're looking at expanding a lot of that inside that Pact Act as well. Um, and one of the big things too, and a lot of a lot of people do know about it, but but I always like to bring it up is the Camp Lejeune water issues, right? So yes. the Camp Lejeune water issues were huge, um, and and there was a lot of health effects that were caused by that water contamination, um, and and there's a there's a pretty slim, uh, you know, kind of margin for that. However, ultimately, it's thirty days if you served at Lejeune for thirty days between basically April first, nineteen fifty three. And December 31st of 87, um, you will qualify for those presumptive conditions there. <clears throat> um, yeah. And um, just to kind of touch upon some of the basics that you need for uh, presumptive conditions, right? The first thing you need is your DD 214. It'll reflect the areas that you have been in. And if you qualify for um, being in certain areas for some of these presumptives, 
your DD214 should uh, reflect that, right? And number two, uh, if you are diagnosed for certain conditions that are part of the presumptives related to, let's say, uh, Camp Lejeune or Agent Orange, uh, any kind of burn pit exposure, right? Gulf War syndrome. There's, there's a whole lot of uh, presumptives nowadays, and I think they're just going to be more going down the line, just like you were mentioning with the PACT Act, that, that if that gets through, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and touching on, you know, adding more conditions. I mean, in the last in the last two years, we've seen them add more conditions, you know, some onto the H and Orange exposure, some onto the Gulf War presumptives. You know, a lot of that burn pit stuff is, is becoming huge. So, you know, one of the one of the biggest things that that, you know, that, that I kind of always recommend, too, is, hey, get on those registry lists. Right. Yes. So so get with the VA, get registered as as a veteran who served in one of those areas, because not only a you know, it, it, they're going to provide you with more information about types of conditions that you're going to be suffering from or, or possibly that. But but also, you know, they're able to run different tests on you as well to see if, hey, you know, maybe you do have this going on because of because of that uh, that area that you would serve. So, yeah. Um, and even just yeah. past the point of uh, disability, it's good to just get these things recognized just even for your own personal health. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. So. Once again, you know, we will be getting to some questions and answers later on here. But in addition to that, you guys are always welcome to sign up for any for any free discovery calls that you have. And, and that gets you in touch with a with a live agent here as well, a live a live person from VACI. Um, and they're able to answer kind of some of those questions as well. So so make sure you check that out and uh, you know, get get signed up with that. And even if you don't, even if you don't join our program, it's still good to have that have that little bit of insider knowledge too. So, definitely, um, you know, no cost. So, gotta love gotta love stuff for free. But yeah, Justin, if you wanna if you wanna go ahead and talk about uh, talk about kind of you know, we'll start with the earliest one, right? The uh, the Gulf War presumptive. So, if you wanna kind yeah. of go through a little bit of that, that'd be great. Sure, sure. So. With the Gulf War presumptives, it kind of covers a wide swath. There's uh, quite a few things that fall under Gulf War presumptives, right? So there's three categories. There's category one, the Gulf War symptom presumptives that are um, Gulf War, like basically they've recognized that certain Gulf War veterans uh, began developing random, unconnected, chronic symptoms that um, do not compromise a single identifiable diagnosis. And that's how Gulf War syndrome uh, came about, meaning that it's, it's a whole swath of things, maybe not just one or two things that lead to one specific thing, right? Um, some common signs and symptoms of Gulf War syndrome include, you know, uh, fatigue, uh, certain skin conditions, if you get chronic headaches, muscle pains, joint pains, um, if you're dealing with any neurological symptoms, mental health symptoms, you can see that this covers a lot under um, the Gulf War syndrome itself, right? And the list goes on. There's, you know, even respiratory syndromes, uh, gastro gastrointestinal uh, symptoms, menstrual disorders, and even abdo abnormal weight loss, right? So if you're suffering from any of these things, I would say the first thing you want to do is definitely get in contact with your doctor, um, get checked out for these things, right? Um, the second category are uh, multi-symptom illnesses, right? So these are conditions that manifest uh, multiple symptoms. And for multi-symptom illnesses, they, uh, as long as they're chronic, meaning they're happening all the time, and they manifest themselves to at least a 10% VA rating criteria um, before December 31st, 2026, then you know those will qualify for a Gulf War, right? Um, so there are little time constraints like that uh, with the Gulf War syndrome. Currently, it is December. If you get these claims in before December thirty first, twenty twenty six, that's what you want to be working on, or at least get the diagnosis for, right? So you can start that process. Um, again, if these are things that you don't have any experience with, this is what we're here for. Right. Um, you know, check out the discovery call, join the elite program. You know, you might even be working with either me or, or um, SVC Travis. Right. Yeah. Um, and just to touch upon the third category, that would be infectious diseases. Right. 
So some of those conditions that qualify uh, for Gulf War uh, under infectious diseases, you know, could be um, brucell brucellosis, um, malaria, you know, sh uh, shingles and, and tuberculosis are just a few to mention, right? Now, again, if you want a more detailed understanding of what sort of conditions uh, are involved with that, we have the link to um, the blog post that has all our VA presumptive information there. And if you qualify for something, just check it out. See, we'll see what might be on that list for you, right? Yeah, and I think one of the big things to kind of touch on with that too is, you know, a lot of people are looking at, you know, Gulf War presumptive as, you know, hey, uh, you know, service in Iraq, right? Um, you know, things like that, or, you know, the Persian Gulf, right? But one of the big things there too is it actually covers a lot of just that, that kind of Southwest, uh, you know, um, Asia area, right? So, you know, Syria, Djibouti, um, Uzbekistan, right? Some of those countries also fall into that. Um, Oman is on there as a as a listing as well. So, you know, even though you may not have served in in Iraq or directly on the ground in Iraq, it also covers you know the Persian Gulf. It covers the airspace above these areas and locations as well. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, if you were if you were serving anywhere in that kind of that southwestern Asia area, you know, you definitely probably qualify for some of these presumptive conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and as as Justin had said, you know, basically getting the diagnosis of those um, you know conditions, um, and they have to kind of manifest to that ten percent before that twenty twenty six date that you were talking about. Um, so December thirty first, twenty twenty six. Currently, they did extend that once already. Um, yeah. You know, I mean. It was, it was kind of interesting because it was expiring while we were still in, you know, in some of these areas. Um, and, and, you know, so they've kind of extended that deadline as well. Um, and, and one of the big things there, too, and, and, and I'm sure most of y'all are kind of kind of tuning in today to listen about, you know, kind of the burn pit exposure stuff. Right. Yes. So so one of the big things of that PACT Act, as well as, uh, you know, as well as a multitude of other things, is kind of the burn pit exposure stuff. So. You know, um, they just added they just added three conditions last year, actually, um, that were kind of, you know, presumptive to be in, in these areas around these burn pits. And that's asthma, allergic rhinitis and then the sinusitis portions. Um, so one of the big things there is, you know, any of those conditions, basically 10 years from your date of discharge, um, will, you know, you're, you're able to file for those under a presumptive a presumptive category. Um, now, now just because you don't, you don't qualify for the presumptive conditions, right? So say, you know, you separated over 10 years ago, however, you know, you may have, you may have had symptoms of these, but you weren't officially diagnosed. Um, you know, we can get you in contact with medical teams to develop nexus statements, um, that would kind of help out, help out your case as well. Um, you know, it's all part of the big Calusa triangle portion, um, uh, you know, having, having a current disability. Um, you know, and then, and then that nexus statement tying it into an in-service event or aggravation as well. Um, and we'll touch on, we'll touch on a little bit more of the PACT Act and how that's going to affect the burn pit exposure here in a little bit. Um, you know, one of the, one of the big things that, uh, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of included, uh, within, within the presumptive stuff. And, and we touched on a little bit of it a little bit ago was, uh, the Camp Lejeune water, water containment exposure, right? So. You know, I touched on, you know, if you served between basically April, August 1st, 1953 and December 31st, 1987, and you were you were in Lejeune for 30 days or more, um, then you do have those presumptive conditions that could be linked to that water exposure. Kidney cancer, liver cancer, um, you know, there's a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, adult leukemia, um, you know, things like that where where basically they were kind of caused by, by that water exposure, which is, which is really unfortunate to, to, to even think about, you know, Hey, yeah. Like not only did you have to worry about, you know, exposures elsewhere, but then right here, you know, on your base that you were living on, um, unknowingly, you know, um, you know, the, the water type issues there. Um, but yeah, and then it brings us to kind of the, one of the big ones and kind of one that I would say I deal with most often is, is the Agent Orange exposure, right? Definitely. Um, you know, yeah. the Agent Orange presumptives and, <laughs> and any Vietnam veterans listening right now, um, you know, welcome home, right? Welcome home. 
I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that y'all are here and, uh, and yeah, excited to uh, excited to help any way that we can. Um, you know, once again, you know that discovery call, right? Go ahead yeah. and sign up with us. Get uh, get chatting with us, and we'll kind of uh, you know we'll kind of help uh, help guide you and uh, and educate you on what's all out there. So you know, Agent Orange basically was used in Vietnam, Korea during the '60s and the '70s. That was a um, herbicide, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, and any length of service over there kind of qualifies you for it. There's also, you know, the, the blue water and the, and the brown water type stuff, too, for the inter, intercoastal areas, um, you know, that it also covers as well. So, you know, any anybody, any veteran who served in, uh, you know, in Vietnam between 62 and basically 75 are presumed to have that age or exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and one of the big things is, you know, it'll say directly on your DD-214 where you were, right? And, and it'll kind of, you know, give that information of, hey, yeah, I was here. Um, and one of the biggest things there is it's really hard to kind of to kind of argue, right? If, if, if you have evidence that you were there, right, then you're providing that solid evidence, you know, that, that you were in those locations. So, um, you know, one of the big things there, too, is there's, there's also a ship list, right? So there's a ship yeah. list of, of all those ships that were, that were kind of sent to the coast over there um blue water veterans you know that that's 12 nautical miles within the shores of vietnam um on or near military bases in thailand even qualify yeah Um, and uh oh i just want to reiterate for those of you um are still a little confused in in how this process works especially with presumptives your dd214 it's it's gonna basically be able to show where you were where you were stationed at where you're deployed to and that's what's going to really help to establish that you were in the locations that you were for these presumptives, right? Yeah, heck yeah, man. Yeah, and, and and that's huge, right? Providing evidence that I was here, right, or you were there, right, is is one of the biggest things to draw in that presumptive. Um, you know, because without without concrete proof, you're really not going to qualify for that for that presumptive condition there. Um, and uh, again, especially for Agent Orange, any length of service is enough to qualify, right? So, you know, for a lot of these presumptives, uh, there's the 90-day rule of being, um, you know, enlisted or, or active for 90 days. But for Agent Orange, it's any amount of exposure, right? Any length of service is enough to qualify for it. Um, so don't count yourself out. That's what, basically what I'm saying. Yeah, and there's and there's currently what 40, 40 plus different conditions yes. coming underneath you know the the agent orange aspect too, um, you know chloral acne right so kind of skin conditions there type mm-hmm. two diabetes Hodgkin's disease right um, ischemic heart conditions um, and and one of the one of the big things that they kind of added added last year too was even you know because because Parkinson's disease was also, you know, a presumptive condition. However, they also had a Parkinsonism right. um, kind of kind of symptoms. So, you know, tremors and shakes and things like that. Um, and, and some of these conditions do have a time frame of, you know, they did have to be kind of diagnosed within one year of your last um, of your last exposure. Um, for instance, uh, you know the the peripheral neuropathy right so they're saying early onset peripheral neuropathy they're looking for you know things that have developed you know peripheral neuropathy being you know numbness tingling in your in your hands and your feet area um they're looking at you know that being early onset meaning hey it happened and happened pretty early after the exposure right right um, but some of these conditions you know may not may not have may not have manifested until until recently right and they can still be looked at for for a presumptive type connection there now um also for in terms of location for agent orange as well um you know the main areas are vietnam and thailand but uh for those of you that may have um been exposed to agent orange due to any testing or storage or disposal uh of it uh as long as you're able to provide proof that you were or around Agent Orange outside of Vietnam or Thailand, uh, that can qualify for a presumption as well. 
So yeah, yeah, and that, and that's and that's huge to to kind of think about, you know, or even even like the Korean DMZ, right? Yes. Um, you know, sixty seven to seventy one, right? Also, you know, presumably uh, Agent R's exposure there as well. So yeah, no, that uh, definitely definitely good information there, Justin. Um, you know, I would say that even you know, kind of even taking a look at you know the 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 Air Force aircrafts, right, that were used to transport, you know. Um, some of these chemicals or may have been contaminated um, after the war as well, um, qualify you as being exposed to the Agent Orange aspect. So, um, you know, there's also different different testing storage disposal sites that were used um, to get rid of or to store, you know, those herbicides in the US. Um, and there is a list on that, on that blog post of those locations. Um, you know, I'll, I'll actually just touch on one of these quick questions right here because uh, sure. there was a, uh, there was a, it looks like Stefan had, uh, had asked what are the dates of Southwest Asia. So I'm not sure if we had touched on that yet. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. So Justin, if you want to go ahead and let them know kind of what the, uh, what the time frame of that was, that would be, uh, that would be great. Sure. Yeah. Is this for the, um, the Gulf War or? Yep. Yep. The Gulf War presumptives. Gotcha. All right. Give me one second. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the time frame for the Gulf War syndrome is, and I believe, as I think as long as uh, you have symptoms that qualify and they manifest before December 31st, 2026. Uh, but yep. uh, in terms of locations of being in the Gulf War, right? Um, it's just anywhere in the Southwest uh, Asia theater, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. So in terms of time frame, it's just whether or not um, you have any of the conditions that manifest from um, uh, the Gulf War presumptives uh, list, uh, and um, if yeah, if you served uh, during Gulf War area. Um, oh, right here. So, so if you served. Um, in Southwest Asia or Afghanistan um, after September 19, 2001, you know, um, that's what you're you're looking for in terms of your time frame of where you were at. Yeah, and, and that's and that's one of those big things, um, you know, kind of taking the taking the plate too was, you know, you also had, you know, the first the first, you know, the first uh, Gulf War, right? So you had Desert Storm, Desert Shield. So if you if you had uh, if you had uh, served during that time period as well, you're going to qualify for it. So basically, I mean, it's like a, I mean, it's like a 30 year time frame, right? Of of kind of uh, you know that that presumptive. So yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those. It's probably the longest presumptive uh, time frame that that currently uh, currently is uh, is out there. Um, and and yeah. So with that being said, I know we're we're kind of getting up on our time here before before I want to go ahead and jump into some questions um, from the chat, but. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and touch on a little bit of that PACT Act stuff. Now, for, for those of you who haven't heard about it, right, so honoring our PACT Act of 2022, right? So that's one of the big things that is currently going through VA right now, um, you know, kind of waiting on waiting on some, some big signatures, right, in order to currently make it a law. Um, so we are tracking that extremely, extremely heavily, and I will touch on just kind of, kind of some of the bigger points to it, right? Because um, it is an extremely large document, right? It covers yes. a lot of different areas. Um, you know, one of the big things is expanding the healthcare for specific categories of toxic exposed veterans and veterans supporting certain overseas contingency operations, right? So, um, you know, looking to find out, you know, hey, what, what toxins were veterans exposed to um, in, in certain areas, right? So Operation Enduring Freedom, Freedom Sentinel, Iraqi Freedom, right? New Dawn, Kind of, uh, kind of a lot of those operations and what uh, what kind of uh, exposures that, that you had during that time period is what they're going to be looking at. Um, they're also going to expand the presumptive um, of the specific toxin exposures for members who served on or after August 2nd of 1990 mm -hmm. in, in locations like Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, um, Somalia. And then they're going to be looking at basically after September 11th, 2001, in Afghanistan, Djibouti, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, right? So a bunch of other 
a bunch of other countries are going to be added to this new presumptive area. Um, is, yeah. And yeah, it's going to be huge. Um, um, yeah. And, and going off of that as well, they're going to expand uh, presumptions related to Agent Orange exposure uh, by including Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Guam, American, American Samoa, and uh, the Johnson Atoll as locations for Agent Orange exposure. Yeah. yeah so once again, you know, expanding, expanding the locations of all of these presumptives is going to be huge because, you know, there may have been, there may have been, you know, some of our, some of our Vietnam vets, right? Our Vietnam era veterans that served in, that served in Guam during this time period. Right. right. So <clears throat> being able to have that covered now, um, as opposed to it not being covered, could open up the door to a lot of those other veterans that are suffering from health conditions um, that, uh, that, that, that definitely need to be service connected for it. So, I mean, I would say um, at the end of the day for uh, presumptions, right? Presumptive conditions, it's always location, 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 right? Where were you? Where did you serve? Um, yeah. that, that is huge. So when they expand that list, it just adds, you know, brings more people into the fold. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And one of the other, one of the other cool things too is, you know, um, they're going to be opening up that, that kind of radiation exposure, right. Um, to, to even veterans who participated in cleanup activities, um, you know, that, that may have been, um, you know, in, in those nuclear, nuclear response zones, uh, Spain, Greenland, things like that as well. Um, you know, they're going to be looking at, uh, they're going to be looking at expanding that list as well. Um, and, and kind of adding even more locations. Um, you know, I know, I know I saw a question in the chat a little bit ago about, uh, you know, about the Chernobyl stuff and, um, you know, so that's gonna be kind of looking at, uh, looking at some of that stuff. Um, and, and one of the big things too, and, and we touched on a little bit ago was, was the, the burn pit stuff, right? Yeah. So, you know, adding, adding like 23 different, uh, different illnesses and cancers that can be related to the burn pits. Um, you know, even even like some sort of head cancer, neck cancer, right, respiratory type stuff, gastrointestinal cancer. So there's gonna be a lot of like a lot of cancers that are gonna be added to the Gulf War presumptives via the burn pit. So once again, um, if you guys have not, if y'all have not done this yet, make sure you get on the registry. Yes. That way they're able to start, you know, kind of checking and testing, you know, to, to see if you do have any of this. Because I mean, let's be honest; it's it's better to catch it early on, right? Um, and and know if you have anything going on there. So yes. you know, even even emphysema type related conditions. You know, I know they added three respiratory conditions last year. Yeah. You know, um, you know they're looking at other type of other types of uh, of kind of respiratory issues there too. That is huge. That's so huge. Yeah, because uh, yeah, just like you were saying. It was three conditions before. It was the rhinitis, yeah. sinusitis, and asthma. And now uh, possibly we'll be getting 23 new conditions, which is, that's a huge expansion. So, you know, yeah, no, it's, uh, helping people with that, right? Yeah. Definitely exciting, man. Definitely exciting. Um, you know, and I think, I think, you know, kind of, you know, switching gears, going back to that Gulf War stuff, you know, this is, this is one of the conditions that actually you and I were talking about earlier today, you know, yeah. adding hypertension as as a presumptive for agent orange exposure right um a lot of veterans and, and you know we we deal with a lot of veterans on a daily basis um and and a lot of them do have hypertension type issues yes. so you know being able to kind of tie that into the agent orange exposure type stuff that we have um or that that you may have had you know is going to be it's going to be huge as well that's um, a big one yeah all right. And then one of the one of the big things there too is, um, you know, they're, they're they're talking about you know how do you file for these how do you file for these presumptive conditions, right? Yeah. So so if you've never filed for any of these presumptive conditions, right, it will be a new claim at that point. Um, if you have filed for them in the past and were denied, but now they become a presumptive condition. Um, you can you can file a supplemental claim as soon as as soon as this bill goes through. You can file a supplemental claim, and you can end up getting that service connected based off in the presumptive time period using the supplemental stuff, right? But if it was not continuously 
pursued during this time period, and this is a lot of questions that we get, right, about back pay, right? Definitely. So if the claim was not continually pursued and you filed they and you file that supplemental claim to get that condition added, um, it will go from the date of your supplemental um, filing date. It, it will not it will not backdate it. So say if you were if you were denied for a condition in let's just say 1990, right? And and you didn't file for it all the way up until 2022. Um, it will not it will not backdate it to 1990. It will stick with the supplemental claim filing date of 2022. Yeah. So um, you know, just make sure that make sure that it, hey, yeah, if you have been continuously trying and fighting for these conditions, and and some of these may have been may have been on you know BVA appeals at this point, right? Mm -hmm. um that now is being added as a presumptive so um yeah just be on the lookout for that and uh and yeah, yeah. like i said if you guys do have any questions at all we are here um you know you can definitely sign up and get started for free um at, at the link that's on the screen right now um you can also set up a discovery call to talk with to talk with one of our with one of our uh team members and kind of just get more information about the program as well oh yeah um, i know I know Justin, your link has been thrown into uh, yeah. thrown into the chat here. Um, my link has definitely been thrown in, and you know, if you guys want to sign up directly with one of us, you have that opportunity as well. We have plenty of amazing coaches out there that uh, that can help you, and uh, and yeah. yeah. So, with that, man, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about going in and diving into some questions and answers from uh, oh, from our audience today, man? Definitely, definitely. I just wanted to add one more thing to that too, which is. Um, if anything we're saying sounds like gibberish to you, that, that doesn't uh, clock with you at all, don't worry. You know, uh, check out that discovery call. Join the elite program. That's what we're here for, to educate and uh, make sure you know what you need to know. Right. So, you know, don't be afraid. We're, we're, we're kind. Right. <laughs> so, you know, uh, jump in, figure that out. Uh, call, talk to us. We'll help you figure things out. And, um, yeah, let's jump into some Q&A. Right. Heck yeah. And, and, and along with that, right? I mean, we've only talked for, you know, about, about 30, 35 minutes here about, about these conditions. And to be honest, we could probably hold an entire, an entire, yeah. you know, hour long class directly on this and still not cover all of it just because there is so much. So, you know, that's why it is nice to have that, to have that one-on-one -on -one touch, um, that one-on-one -on -one conversation and, uh, and be able to go through, be able to go through the conditions with, uh, with your coach at that point. So, yeah. yeah um yeah and, and huge shout out to the to the to the team members that we have working behind the scenes aaron and kelsey as well um yeah. if you guys want to go ahead and start throwing some uh throwing some questions into that area um that would be great all right gordon frazier um fyi i cannot give blood anymore after possible exposure to mad cow disease meet in scotland during the late 1980s do you know anything about related va claims um so as far as i know i'm not sure that that has been uh identified as a va presumptive as of yet and i say as of yet because things can always change in the future right um the va might be a little slow to recognize some of these presumptives but um, the more that there's lobbying for this, the more that there's uh, talk about this, the more that they see there's research and, and uh, conditions and issues that arise, it's always the potential for that to be recognized in the future, right? Um, however, I would say, uh, just in your specific situation right now, definitely when you have the chance, try and get in contact with one of us through the elite program. Um, but other than that, uh, would you say, Travis, that um, the biggest thing they need there is probably a nexus, some way to kind of link that mad cow to those uh, events that occurred in Scotland for, for them, right? Yeah, hundred hundred percent there. Um, and Gordon, I'll, I'll say this too, um, and, and you kind of you kind of touched on it in your question, yeah. right? You said you said possibly, mm -hmm. right? So so one of the big things there is you know um, the the VA kind of you know will want concrete proof that that your disability or or your condition was directly caused by 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 that uh by that issue right so so that'll be one of the big things there um 
is uh, is you know that that nexus portion that Justin was talking about. Um, Michelle Michelle it looks like Knight Summers has got a has got a really good question inside here too. Um, you know, so my father was honorably discharged from Army Reserves in '68 after serving eight years. Also, medical records mysteriously burned up in a fire that held all members' records. This has prevented him from receiving any disability. Is there a way to challenge this? So, Michelle, one of the one of the biggest pieces of advice is, the advice that I will give you on that is is if he is suffering from conditions, if he is having issues with anything, right? Do not let not having medical records prevent you from filing, right? Um, so definitely, definitely start filing for those conditions. Um, there's multiple things that can be done within medical records, especially if, let's just say, hey, you know, he went to a private care, care facility within, you know, within a certain time after service, you know, started getting that care. You know, there may be, there may be different presumptives that are linked to his service, Um and, and that would be one of the big things is do not never, ever let not having your military medical records prevent you from even filing. Right. Yes. Um, there's multiple things there that uh, that you're able to do to to assist with that. So, um, you know, maybe maybe one of those special circumstances that that, hey, we need uh, we need to look a little bit more into. Right. And uh, and having a conversation with us could, could definitely help that. And uh, and yeah. So definitely feel free to feel free to sign up for that discovery call as well. Yeah, don't ever count yourself out in this process. Um, don't deny yourself before you've even put in a claim, right? So yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Actually, Derek Derek Kidd has got a question right there too about uh, about <clears throat> our medical records and and how do I get them? So there's a couple different ways that you're able to get your military medical records, right? So if you have filed for a claim before. You can do what's called a requesting of a C file or your claims file from the VA, um, and you would do that on a Freedom of Information Act, um, and you would send that off. If anything, you can also reach out to the National Archives in St. Louis. Um, that is another option there. And then, depending on when you had served, um, you know, basically in, in like in like the early 2000s, they started digitizing a lot of these records. So you can actually go to the Tricare online portal. And uh, and you can actually download pretty much any 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 medical record that you had or any service treatment record that you had um, during that time period as well. Like I said, there is kind of a, a time cutoff for it, and and that does boil down to like the early two thousands um, time frame. And um, also to address Derek's uh, uh, earlier question about, um, I don't have a disability rating now. Do I have a claim? a main rating such as PTSD and after getting rated, then do a secondary such as Gulf War presumptive. So um, just to explain, uh, Gulf War presumptives are not necessarily secondary conditions, right? They're conditions based on um, the service connection being those events that the presumptives are based around, like Agent Orange, Camp Lejeune, uh, burn pits ex exposure, Gulf War syndrome. So uh, a lot of that is for direct service connection based on exposure to these uh, certain events, right? So just to give a little clarification on that, um, you do not have to have any ratings uh, or any conditions um, service connected to go for a Gulf War presumptive as long as you qualify for being in that area and you have the diagnosis for that condition and it reflects in your DD-214. So definitely for a lot of you who um, don't have any claims yet or any um, service connected conditions yet, Gulf War presumptives, or not Gulf War presumptives, but presumptives in general, um, if you qualify for them, they're definitely a good start. All right, cool. All right and then... Actually, Rebecca, Rebecca just put one in there right now, too. Um, you know, in terms of a chronic multi-symptom illness such as IBS, how does the VA define chronic as it relates to our claim? Um, so chronic is defined as basically continuously happening, right? Um, so, you know, if you're if you're having these issues, say, say if you started having these issues back in, let's just pick a year, right? 2016, 
we'll go 2016, you currently still have these issues, then yeah, it is considered a chronic condition. One of the biggest things there, um, you know, is in order to do establish the chronicity of things is, is to have that symptom that lasts longer than, you know, just kind of the acute symptoms, right? Um, so acute symptoms being, being something that just happens, you know, for, for a week and then it's gone, right? If it's, if it's happening for a longer time period, you know, chronicity could even be over the period of a month, right? If you're having this condition that happens longer than a month period, that, that could be defined as chronic. So one of the big things there, and one of the things that I always tell any veteran, any service member that I ever speak to is, is, is go to the doctor, right? Go to yeah. the doctor, get seen by the doctor for the conditions that you are having. And, uh, and that'll be, that'll be huge. Um, you know, it's just continuously getting seen for your conditions because if you're not getting seen for your conditions, you're, you're not treating your issues either. Right. Um, and, and in order to alleviate some of those symptoms that could be going on, um, you know, being able to, uh, being able to get in and, uh, get treatment for it. So, yeah. Um, Robert Resnick has a <clears throat> question. That's a, a very specific situation there. Um, See if we can get that up on the up on the screen. Uh, never went to Vietnam, but was a medical officer in Germany examining soldiers returning directly from Nam. Was exposed to people in their original uniforms. Developed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2010. Uh, wasn't a presumptive at that time. Put in a claim that was rejected. Any chance to get it through? I would say, due to the specificity of that situation. Uh, what might help you the most is getting a nexus letter, something to show that there is research or there's backing to um, provide further evidence and um, a medical opinion uh, to show that that may be the case, that those uniforms may have um, still residual um, effects, right? Um, that that would have led to that. Uh, would you say that's that's probably true too, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, also, let's see here. Um, ah, William Dudley, what about Agent Orange stateside veterans? So just like we were mentioning earlier, uh, if you can provide proof that you were around, um, you know, Agent Orange herbicides stateside, uh, you know, whether or not your DD-214 reflects that or other, other evidence that might show that you were um, involved with the storage, disposal, or testing of these uh, Agent Orange um, materials stateside that can also serve uh, as, a, as a presumptive yeah. or qualify for a presumptive connection. Sorry, and then uh, actually it looks like Greg Gregory had put some, uh, put a comment in there as well about recently being denied a supplemental. Um, and do we help with appeals? So, so Gregory, quick and easy answer on that. We typically do not handle Board of Veterans Appeals cases, right? However, it may not need to go to that point of the BVA. It could be that, uh, that you basically, you know, either an HLR, higher level review, right? Or, you know, looking at your decision letter, it may be something because it, it says that it was rated at 0%. That could be something where where basically you didn't meet the, the 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 higher rating criteria for it based off of your current symptoms so it could be it could be as easy as looking at you know kind of what they wrote in that decision letter mm -hmm. um a lot of times in those decision letters they rate or they, they write in there why you didn't meet that higher percentage um and it may just be you know kind of attacking that and uh and figuring out what it is that uh maybe 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 wasn't explained very well or or potentially the 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 CMP examiner didn't exactly hear what you were saying. Um, and yeah, so it could be as easy as doing another supplemental or even doing a higher level review on that. So it doesn't necessarily have to go to the BVA for an appeal. Um, so that would be where I would say, hey, jump on with one of our coaches and uh, and we can go ahead and uh, look into that and figure out the, the best route of, uh, route of attack for it. So right on. Yeah, and um, just to touch upon that a little bit, uh, I know it can be really frustrating to get a denial in your decision letter sometimes, but um, they're usually a silver lining to them, right? Um, sometimes the VA makes mistakes. 
uh, sometimes uh, even though you got denied for a claim, there might be something in the favorable findings that might help you on your next appeal or um, are you on a reattempt at that claim. So don't count yourself out just because you got a denial, right? Um, that's, that's why we're here, you know, definitely uh, get in touch with us and we can review those things together and we can provide education um, and strategy. And then we'll take, we'll take one more quick one here. Um, actually, uh, I love the name Tater Salad. Um, at yeah. 12, if you want to post it, something there. Um, so I have, I have hypothyroidism and IBS and cannot get the VA to recognize the conditions as a result of exposure to ionizing radiation. No family history of the disease, yet they keep denying service connection. Any ideas on doing them as secondary to exposure to JP5 jet fuel? So one of the big things there, man, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, hey, yeah, that would be the route to go or that would not be the route to go. But as, as kind of, you know, one of those big things is without knowing what that decision letter states, it's really hard for me to say, hey, yeah, man, this is, this is where you need to go, right? Um, but with that being said, that is where our discovery calls come in to play, right? Or that, or that coach call, right, is being able to connect with one of us. We don't we don't charge anything and tell you when your claim anyway, right? So so if you get on the, if you get on the phone with one of us, and then and then you're like, hey, you know what, VACI is not for me. There's no charge, right? You owe us absolutely nothing. Um, but but it would be a great way to get some of those kind of some of those questions answered. And that goes for anybody in the chat. If we have not answered your question today, be sure to sign up with us. That way we can get these questions answered. Um, I have no problem in, in taking a call and, and, and kind of answering questions for a veteran who, who may not want to work with us, right? right. Um, you know, there's plenty of there's plenty of resources out there, um, you know, for for free that you can utilize as well, um, you know, and 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 that's and that's one of the big things is you know it be we are here for you, we are here to help you. Um, so so getting signed up with us and, and just having a conversation, right? Um, that way we kind of break things down for you. So that's, uh, that's huge. Um, one of the big things I do want to touch on as well before we wrap up here is um, tonight at, uh, at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, VA Claims Insider will be live again with our Spanish-speaking uh, coaches. Yeah. Um, there will be a Spanish, a Spanish live at, uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, this evening. And, um, you know, one of the biggest things to kind of wrapping up our call today is, um, you know, Dan Rue is awesome, man. I, I really appreciate the shout out there. Um, is, is presumptives, right? They're ever changing. They will be changing. Um, we will be, they will be adding more conditions to the presumptive categories. As far as the time frame of that happening, we don't know yet, right? We are, we are closely monitoring the situation though, and, and hopefully, Hopefully we can see some action being taken soon. Um, they do have it built into where they could have working teams where, where, you know, basically they're sending us out to medical professionals, getting studies done, figuring out, hey, you know, we're seeing a lot of veterans with these types of conditions, right? What, what can be linked to, you know, this type of stuff? So that's why registering for that registry, getting on those registries is extremely yeah. important because they're able to basically kind of run some of those tests and then that will help them determine, hey, yeah, actually a lot of these veterans, you know, are having are having this same type of condition. So um, be sure to check out the blog post like we had posted earlier today as well um, in regards to some of these presumptives. Um, get on our discovery calls, get with one of our coaches. We'll help you out the best that we can. And uh, yeah, with that being said, Justin, you got any, any closing remarks, man? Ah, I just got to say, you know, if, if you don't know where to start, if you don't know what you're looking for, come to us, come talk to us, right? Um, the SEM method, this is what we do, strategy, education, medical evidence, right? May not always require all three, but um, have a conversation with us and we'll see where we can take you, right? Heck yeah, brothers and sisters, it was great spending this afternoon with you. Um, I look forward to many more. Um, I know Justin has some more, actually, Justin will be live again here in a little while. Um, yeah. so will I, um, you know, later in the month, but, uh, thank you for tuning in today and you all have a great rest of your Wednesday and we'll talk soon. Appreciate y'all. Take care now.